In this video, I outline the next five reasons not to become a Jehovah's Witness. Let's go. Just a reminder to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this content. Now let's get straight into it. Reason number six is about the assistance to society or charities or rather than non-assistance. It is common for religion to help the community by funding charities, schools and colleges. Unfortunately, the Watchtower considers being distinct from the world to mean that the organization and its members should not help anyone who is not a Jehovah's Witness. The Watchtower criticizes charities, describing them as corrupt and ineffective. The majority of information about the charity is limited to claims of money laundering and the establishment of so-called Rice Christians. Now, this is what the Watchtower of 1969, May the 1st, says. If there is any material giving to charities, for instance, it is because there is need to salve a conscience or because one's reputation is at stake. The Watchtower defends its position by arguing that preaching is the only long-term plan. The Watchtower of 2003, June the 1st, states this, When it gives, when it comes to organized charity, though, we need to be cautious as we evaluate the many appeals we receive. There is a kind of giving that is even more important than charity. Jesus alluded to this when a rich young ruler asked what he had to do to get everlasting life. Jesus told him, go sell your belongings and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come to be my follower. Notice that Jesus did not say, give to the poor and you will get life. Instead, he added, come be my follower. In other words, as commendable and beneficial as charitable acts are, Christian discipleship involves more. Jesus' chief interest was in helping others spiritually. Now, although Jesus stated that the destitute will always exist and that no corner of the world is without sin, neither of these statements implies that poor people should be ignored. It ignores Jesus' story of the Good Samaritan, in which he praised the individual who goes out of his way to help people from various groups. It also ignores Jesus' admonition in Matthew 19, verse 19, to love your neighbor as yourself, not simply your brother. There is no restriction on limiting affection to individuals of a single organization in any circumstance. In fact, Jews considered Samaritans to be apostates. In South Africa, for example, we have a charity called Gift of the Givers, headed up by a Dr. Imtia Suleiman, a Muslim by faith, but with a support staff from diverse backgrounds, church affiliations and cultures, all working together to assist the destitute and poor, not only in South Africa, but worldwide. Even inside their own organization, Jehovah's Witnesses have no systematic program to assist the sick. Sick and the disenfranchised Jehovah's Witnesses are frequently compelled to rely on religious charities since the congregation will not provide the aid they require. Individual Witnesses may be so, so preoccupied with meetings and, and preaching that they do not have the time or the resources to help others in need. The seventh reason not to become a Jehovah's Witness is because of their belief that they will never grow old and die. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses do not anticipate to grow old or die, as perplexing as this may appear to most people. They expect to live on this planet indefinitely. As the older generations are being farewelled in funeral speeches, the following generation of Jehovah's Witnesses is told that they will never get old or die. The Awake of 1969 says, May the 22nd says, if you are a young person, you also need to face the fact that you will never grow old in this system, in this present system of things. Now, the Watchtower has preached that its followers will never grow old since its foundation. 
Charles says Russell felt that he would be raptured to heaven in 1878, barely two years after the founding of the Watchtower Society. Rutherford began promoting the idea that millions presently living will never die in 1918, with the expectation that the earthly resurrection will begin in 1925. As a result, many witnesses do not plan ahead for their old age or retirement. As many who leave the Watchtower organization uh, realize that old age will be a natural part of their lives, it causes enormous mental pain and anguish. Reason number eight is the suppression of questioning and reasoning abilities. Jehovah's Witnesses are required to suppress their ability to think and question in order to achieve unwavering unity. Now this fosters unity based on blind obedience to everything in Watchtower publications rather than on truth. When you leave, it takes time to learn to trust your own reasoning abilities and to analyze material on its own merits. The Watchtower makes several direct remarks that hinder healthy questioning of Watchtower information. Watchtower 1987, November the 1st says, False religious propaganda from any source would, should be avoided like poison. Really, since our Lord has used the faithful and discreet slave to convey to us sayings of everlasting life, why should we ever want to look anywhere else? The Watchtower of 1983, January the 15th says, Avoid questioning the counsel that is provided by God's visible organization. Qualified to be ministers of 1955 says, Believe all things, all the things that the Watchtower brings out. And then in the Watchtower of 1967, June the 1st, it states, in Jehovah's organization, it is not necessary to spend a lot of time and energy in research, for there are brothers in the organization who are assigned to, to that very thing, to help you who do not have so much time for this. These preparing the good material in the Watchtower and other publications of the society. These are prime examples of how the organization suppresses critical thinking and discourages independent research. The ninth reason is fear. Religions have utilized fear as a strong tool of control for centuries. Until the 1978 release of my book of Bible stories, the 1958 book for, uh, called From Paradise Lost to Paradise Regained was used as the Bible stories book for children. With imagery like this, it is no wonder little children were traumatized and often had nightmares. The My Book of Bible Stories was not so innocent too as seen in these images. Watchtower doctrine garners criticism for a focus on fear and paranoia. Jehovah's Witnesses are led to believe they are the special focus of an interdimensional battle that will soon result in Satan turning governmental forces against them and are as such a doomsday religion. And images like this, aimed at indoctrinating adults, features prominently within their publications. Fears also manifest in thought control, as former governing body member Raymond Franz states in his book, In Search of Christian Freedom. And I quote where he says, fear of discussion. To this day, in all countries, any persons among Jehovah's Witnesses who find they cannot conscientiously support fully the organization's teachings or practices, live in a climate of fear, feeling they must constantly be on guard as to what they say, what they do, what they read, with whom they associate, from whom they receive letters, not feeling any sense of freedom, even when among personal friends or close relatives, if these are also witnesses. As stated in my personal experience, I have had people phone who were afraid to give their name or who felt it necessary to use a fictitious name some, some who even felt it necessary to, have, to take out a special post office box to be able to correspond without danger of their correspondence with me or other former witnesses being discovered. They face a form of hostage situation produced by the organization's authority. The only way to avoid this is to meet the terms the organization lays down. Fear is certainly a tool used by most cults to control members. Reason number 10 is their legislative rules, both written and unwritten. There are over 30 reasons to be disfellowshipped, 
In addition, there is a plethora of regulation, written and unwritten, compulsory or recommended, stated directly or implied regarding dress codes, beards, entertainment, the size of gatherings, uncleanness, and so forth. There are over 1,100 rules and regulations in the branch organization, uh, organization procedure book. For instance, the following recommendation on dress codes when attending conventions show how paltry watchtower guidelines can become. It states from the Kingdom Ministry 2007, should we manifest a dignified appearance only when attending the program? Remember that many will observe us wearing our convention badges while in the convention city. Our appearance should make us stand out from the general public. Therefore, even during leisure time, such as when going out to eat after the program, we should dress as befits ministers who are in the city for the purpose of attending a Christian convention and should not wear such clothing as jeans, shorts or t-shirts. What a witness this will give to the community. Jehovah is pleased when our appearance bespeaks our roles as ministers. The rules extend to every aspect of the member's life, both public and private. Everything is controlled. Members become slaves to the organization, living life on Watchtower's terms and not their own. That's the show, folks. If you enjoy this content, please feel free to support this channel by becoming a patron. It would go a long way in growing the channel and extending the work I do. And before I go, check out the merch store for the channel in the links below. Until next time, bye for now.